each of these base 10 blocks are going to represent. Now, students have seen this as a one, and they've seen this as a 10. They know that 10 ones make one 10. They also know that a hundred of these ones will make a hundred. You may get into the thinking that, oh, I'm gonna make this flat or a hundred, a hundred, because it sounds the same. That is a mistake, and I'll tell you why really quickly. Essentially, because this is a bigger value, it's a bigger size, and students are gonna wanna associate the bigger value and the bigger size with the quantity. So if you start putting this hundredth, uh, this flat into the hundreds place, it's gonna be confusing for your kids. It's easier for them to make the connection that this flat or a hundredth is also, can also be represented in the ones place. And that will help them when they start thinking about money, which is where you typically use decimal because one flat or one hundredth can also be seen as a hundred pennies or it can be represented as 10 dimes, which makes a dollar and a flat. So be consistent in your messaging. The student should develop an understanding that way that this decimal point right here is gonna separate the integer from the fractional part. And when you start with these decimals, your students will then be able to make the connection that when we have this unit, we divide by 10, that will give us a rod, which is one tenth, and if we divide by 10 again, remember division helps us make sense that the value is getting smaller, that will be one hundredth. And so those are my recommendations. Once your students have had some practice, you want to start building fluency. And you could do things just like you do in K12 with some coral counting, and you can have your students say, okay, show me three tenths, and your students can hold up these three um, 10 rods and they can say hey this is three tenths now I want you to show me three hundredths and they can hold up three of these uh, unit um, ones here to represent three hundredths and then they can make the connection hmm what is a greater value okay is it the three hundredths or the three tenths so that is a skill that students typically really struggle with but again, we use manipulatives to help our students make those representations and make those connections. If you're just going right into the symbolic form, it's going to be confusing. Confusing. So have your students build their decimal values and then have them transfer that into those symbolic forms. And once they've had enough experiences touching and playing with these blocks and making, rep making connections, then they can make representations. They can make drawings of three tens and three hundreds, and they can start making comparisons. So next we're gonna look at how you can use digital manipulatives to support you in teaching decimals and develop conceptual and procedural fluency. Let's do it. All right, everybody. So now that we've had some opportunities to look at some physical manipulatives we can use with decimals, we're gonna flip over to those virtual manipulatives. And I would strongly encourage you to use virtual manipulatives because they're gonna deepen students' understanding and they're gonna help them, especially when we start doing operations with decimals, they're gonna help transfer their learning. So reviewing back, we've already assigned some values here for our manipulatives. Remember our flat is going to represent the ones place. The base 10 rods are gonna represent those tenths plates and the ones are gonna represent the hundreds place. And in an earlier video, we talked about why that's so important. And you'll see it here in these virtual manipulatives why it's so important to assign these values. So let's get started. Three things we're gonna focus on, comparing decimals, adding decimals, and subtracting decimals. Please make sure you, st you stick around because there's some cool stuff that these virtual manipulatives can do that you will not see with the physical manipulative. So. First, let's say, which is greater, 12 hundredths or six hundredths? We can have our students build. It's really important for them to actually build that so they can see and make those comparisons. Um, obviously, when they have these digital representations, it's gonna aid in math talk 
because they can it can help them explain their thinking. So we see here, this is point 12 hundredths. And now we're going to build six hundredths. So I'm just going to get these here. So drag out six of my hundredths. Now I can make a comparison, which is greater, which has a bigger value. And I can see that in terms of the size, this is a smaller value. Six hundredths is smaller. So I can start using those fun symbols. Twelve hundredths is greater than six hundredths. Okay, we got that down. Check. Let's move on to our next problem, adding decimals. We have one and thirty-one hundredths plus seven tenths. So I will start with the flats here and I'm going to grab one. I'm going to grab three tenths. And one hundredths. And I'm going to add to that. I'm going to add seven tenths. So let me grab seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have seven tenths. We're going to add to one and 31 hundredths. Okay. So I don't have any um, other hundredths to add. So I'm going to add these tenths together. Place them together. And let's count. Let's see how many tenths we have. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten tenths. Watch what happens when I have these ten tenths. Watch this. I can loop them all together. Oops. Not quite. I gotta get them all in there because I'm going to regroup these ten tenths and make them into, that's right, another one. So now I have two ones and one hundredth. Awesome. Do you see how magical that is for our kiddos? Kids love this. So now we know the answer when we add one and thirty one hundredths plus seven tenths, it's going to give us two and one hundredths. We're going to put a zero in the tenths place because we have no tenths here. Okay, we got that. Next, we're going to do our final problem, which is subtracting one and twelve hundredths we're gonna subtract 4,600. So let's start building here. I'm gonna start building with one whole, and then we'll build, oops, we just need one of those, one tenth and two hundredths, okay? And just like traditional subtraction, now we're gonna subtract 46 hundredths from one and 12 hundredths, okay? So let's start with this six here. We have six hundredths. I know I have two hundredths here, so I don't have enough. I don't, I need more. I need more of my hundredths to be able to take away six, okay? So just like traditional subtraction, you can look to the value to the left and you can borrow. I have this 10, one tenth here. I can break it apart. Now look what happens. Now I have 10 hundredths. So can I now take away six hundredths? Yes, I have enough. So let's start doing that. We'll count one, two, three, four, five, six. Awesome. Now I will take away four tenths. Well, it looks like I don't have enough tenths here, but I do have this ones, and this I know that this ones represents ten tenths, so I can also break this apart. Awesome. Now let's take away four tenths. One, two, three, four. And just like traditional subtraction, what is left over is my answer. So let's count. We have one, two, three, four, five, six tenths. And one, two, three, four, five, six hundredths. Uh-oh, looks like I forgot my decimal point. That is gonna tell me that 
remember, this is a decimal form, represents less than one whole. My answer is 66 hundredths. Wonderful. So we've done comparing, adding, and subtracting decimals. Have fun playing with virtual manipulatives. Thanks so much, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.